the speed of light. Is this actually something that we can actually measure? Is the speed of light actually 186,000 miles per second? Can we travel faster than light? Well, Einstein's theory, a theory, Newtonian theory, a theory, has been taught to literally millions of people throughout time by the way of science, going to school and everything else. And these things are not true. They are not true at all. They, they are based on what we see around us and what we cannot see, we ignore. And this is a problem with this type of science because people thought the world was flat because, yeah, they didn't have the science and testing capabilities to check in whether or not the Earth was round or not until Copernicus came up with an idea. But we still, even after Copernicus, we still didn't know if the world was actually round. We knew that it wasn't flat, but we didn't know it was actually round until someone sent up a rocket with a man in it and he saw with his own eyes the Earth is a globe. Now, when you're talking about faster than light things or and faster than light travel, you, there are two things you have to talk. You can't talk about the speed of light without talking about something else that everyone keeps saying that they know nothing about, that we know nothing about. And it, it really is starting to bug the hell out of me, which is why I'm making this video, because I've known since the time I was eight years old that Einstein was wrong, Newton was wrong, and that our ideas of gravity are wrong, our ideas of the speed of light are wrong. <laughs> this is kind of crazy, isn't it, Carl? You're just a crazy man, a lunatic of sorts. Well, I'm going to show you here why these people are wrong. Well, the first thing is that their mathematics are the mathematics and theories that they that they push upon us are completely a complete idiocy our mathematics the way we treat the way we measure things is complete idiocy it doesn't match up it's great for the measurements that we use to build and make things but you cannot base real unknown science upon these things. You can measure, you, you can tell how far something is and anything else based on our mental capabilities of measuring distance and time. But we are nothing more than pigeons that know, well, or crabs that know when time has passed. We are the same thing. Now, when you go into, let's, let's start first by saying that I will tell you right now that gravity gravity is not a force of attraction our globe the earth we live on the moon anything that's placed into this greater universe or outer space does not have in it has no gravitational attraction there is no math, there is no testing, there is nothing that shows that gravity, if you have a large enough object, that that object will attract other objects. There is nothing at all that shows this. Now, how do I know this? Gravity is a force of compression. It's the same as if you lived under the sea, then the force of the water above you and the force of water around you would push up on your body and probably crush you like that those poor people inside of that bathyscaphe now when you talk about what do you mean Carl that it's not a force of attraction well if let's say we have something like this a uh, okay there first of all there are particles and light and waves that are faster than light 
They are around us all the time. Everything. The stars in the sky, the billions and billions of galaxies and stars exude the pressure. They make the pressure. They send out waves and particles of light. And these waves of particles of light, they gain speed. Some of them are at 186,000, blah, 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 blah. But this is only our measurement, only, only our capability of measurement. But a lot of them are faster than us. And many of them are so fast that they travel through and around every object. So now, if we have a sea of light waves and particles, what... Why does it, why, what, it, what happens to them? What do they, what do they, what are they doing? Well, what they're doing is, if you have an object, here, let's, uh, take two objects. We'll take one square object, and how does, we don't see any Borg cubes out in space. Now, why is that? It, is it because if you have a large enough object out in space, then you can't have a cube? <laughs> because of its, it, that the corners will attract themselves and turn it into this? No, this is not true at all. This is just, this is, uh, I don't even know how to explain it to people that just don't understand the fallacy in thinking like this. If you take a uh, wa if you take a water droplet or any liquid substance and you put it out in the middle of out, outside of our troposphere, if you're going to the moon and you say hey and you want to have a drink of water and the water is floating around you, why isn't that water just floating in some weird pattern? Why why does the water after after the uh, motion the force applied to it by spitting or or ejecting it out why does that water droplet form it into a globe it's because and there's nothing a water droplet does not have enough size in order to prove your theory that or that gravity is a force of attraction a water droplet should never be around. It should aspirate into thousands of particles, gaseous objects and particles. But it does not. It congeals. It is pushed by the gravitational forces of faster than light particles and waves. And they, you put a water droplet in a square in a in a square box. Remove the square box. The water will be pushed by. The gravitational soup that we live in into this. Now, people are always saying, "Yeah, oh, well, well, we know that gravity exists because the moon is there, and this is there, and the moon gets too close, and gravity pushes the moon causes the waves to happen, and everything else. The moon moves everything around. But if you have an Earth and you have the moon," The proximity of these two things, there is an effect that will happen as these waves and particles are traveling in between, in between and around these things. At a certain point, there are going to be more waves and particles on the outside of this, and and not only are the the Earth and Moon trying to be pushed together. But there's also a vac attraction and, and vacuum effect. Creating a vacuum, circling means that it's pulling some of the light particles from in between here, which means that the Earth and Moon are going to be attracted together. And once the air, this attraction starts, it, I mean, we're talking about things that are on such a scale that they happen very slowly. So we know that after a while, as soon in, in some time in the future, that the moon will actually land on Earth because they are constantly being pushed together. Now, our seas and oceans and things like that are not proof that the moon is affecting 
the our seas and oceans that the moon is causing a wave by with its circular pattern because it's not <laughs> what's happening is the moon because of the ocean of gravity is all around us the moon is blocking this ocean from at certain times it's blocking the soup and causing this attraction this this slight vacuum in between the two objects to travel around this slight vacuum that is created by another circle so if you get if you get a if you get a circle of fluid flowing then that fluid flowing around will automatically create suction in between and this suction moves around and creates waves around this is what is actually happening it's the moon is not pulling the waves around it is blocking the light with the faster than light particles and causing the waves to happen that way another thing is that this this thing uh, this thing was us thinking that gravity is a force of attraction is the same as we thought that that the sun traveled around the earth this is just a basic thing we are wrong whenever we say this to people and we're teaching the wrong kind of science to people because of it and so yeah when you think about faster than light there's always things that are faster than light gravity is faster than light yeah well we don't know the secret of gravity <laughs> well the secret of gravity is that it is not a force of attraction that's why if we, if we can it's like knowing the secret of rocketry by thinking that the world is flat and that the world and the world goes around the and the, and the sun goes around the world you can't create proper science if your premise of the science is incredibly stupid and wrong at the basis of it Einstein's theory of relativity all these other things they are good explanations for nothing that actually exists they are a Bible for things that people will believe in that science believes in that are not true and when you think about this, when you go home and you watch this video and you think about it, you will see absolutely in your mind, wait a minute, that's right. It is not. It's, none of this stuff is true. You can, you can, when you, Isaac Newton did not know that gravity, how gravity worked, simply because he did not have a rocket. Yeah, things, he was sitting on the earth and he thought, well, you know the earth is pulling something in all the time so it must fall but we all know that if you get into a rocket and you travel outside the troposphere that suddenly things stop coming back down to earth this is <laughs> the fallacy of newton newton's fallacy is something that is never just taught about in schools just like the flat earth theories uh, are never talked about it. In schools this is why people believe in <clears throat> this silliness and the same thing is happening right now we are we are suffering from Newton's fallacy we have for hundreds of years thought that gravity is be, that Jupiter has more gravity than Venus and Venus everything else because they are larger one object is larger than the other but it is not true a, a boat that's on an ocean displaces water and the flotation factor of that boat is based on the size of the displacement object large objects displace more faster than light particles and light waves and so <laughs> yes they float differently they have different volumes of gravitational forces against them because they are displacing more not because they are 
bigger and attracting more, but because they are displacing more of the soup that we live in more. And like, as I said, you can prove this by just throwing a water droplet out into space. Now, this is one of the things, I don't like making videos like this because it, it what happens is people are like, well, show me the math, show me the how you get this conclusion. Well, I can't show you the math and, and the conclusion because how we think about math is also wrong. I think uh, Cuba, Cuba Gooden Jr. said it best, like, if you think about things like one times, what is one times one? And you can see that our mass is completely wrong by just thinking about the uh, one times one fallacy. There's also two fallacies that allow us to create certain amounts of measurements in a system that actually works, but doesn't is not the correct system. Our system of math is based on zero and affinity, that zero is nothing, and infinity is everything, when in actuality they are the same thing. The zero means that we cannot it, that we cannot measure the the small the smallness of something, so we call it zero. So we have run out of com computational power to measure something smaller than one, so we call it zero. The same thing with infinity. Our computational skills, our math, don't allow, only allow us to, <laughs> to compute to a certain level. And so once we reach that level, then we say, oh, it must be until infinity. When it is not, pi is not an infinite number that ends in three. This is, these are all fallacies that we have to live with because they work in what we do. But it, they are not always true. And it's about time that scientists and these Nobel Prize winners and all these other guys start coming to the, coming to the truth that their theories are only theories and a lot of their theories are Theories that cannot be proven unless they actually cheat with the math. Einstein's theory of relativity is nothing more than Einstein cheating with the math. Newtonial, Newtonian physics is only Newton cheating with the math. Yes, you say, well, this works, so his theory must be correct. Because something works does not mean that your math is correct. It just means that something works. You still don't know why it works. You still don't know. You don't have any, you've come to a conclusion without having any proof of that conclusion. And to me, this is stupidity. And this is why I always say that the human race is, we are still just a bunch of primates. We are still just a bunch of monkeys running around with torches burning ourselves because we know that fire is hot we know that fire burns we know that we know that our fire can release energy and make energy and light and things of this sort but these are not proof of the way that the sun works you say yeah well the sun is on fire yeah, but the fire from this tree, is the fire from this tree? Because this is what kids are learning in school that, yeah, the fire from the tree is the same as a fire from stars. And they are not. And, but we tend to think this thing. Now I'm going to end this video by having you do a little bit of critical thinking. Now, many of us are not going to be astronauts and a lot of people are, I myself will never grow up into a 200 ton stick of dynamite <laughs> and risk my life going out into outer space to perform experiments. But And these experiments are totally meaningless. Now, I will end this by saying that, yes, light might travel at a particular speed where we are, 
but we have no idea whether or not light travels faster or slower in Alpha Centauri. <laughs> yeah, we've never been to Alpha Centauri, so we don't know. Maybe there, when we go there and measure the speed of light, it is 10, 12, 20 times faster than the, the, the light factor that we have here. Maybe if we were in at Alpha Centauri, we would not be here because light would be so fast and so powerful that biological constructs like us could not exist. So, yeah, whenever you think about cosmology, and and this is why I get a little bit angry about Pete with people like Neil deGrasse Tyson because he promotes this cosmology that is actually a fallacy. And then he says, do, and he always asks you this question, did you know the truth? When in actuality, he doesn't know the truth either. Because his truths are based on fallacies that were created by other men and other people before him. But just remember this, that you can, if you just want to shut down the CERN particle accelerator, which costs so much money and everything else, trying to prove things, that just don't need to be proven. Yes, gravity does exist. <laughs> does it exist as a force of attraction? Large objects attract other large objects and small objects and everything else? No. <laughs> Faster than light particles do exist? Well, yes, they exist and what they create is what we call gravity. The pressure of, of the forces of the light of billions of stars and c celestial objects reflecting upon each other, moving around and everything else, create this soup that we live in. If you really want to know how the whole world works, how the whole universe works, go buy yourself one of these things, one of these old lava lamps. Oh, yeah, one of these old lava lamps from the 70s. If you look at a lava lamp, then you will see how the universe actually works. You will see that when we think that the universe is expanding and, and, and contracting, you will see that inside of that lava lamp. This is the only explanation I can really give you that you will actually see physically and be able to understand. Because in my mind, it'd be very hard for me to train everyone else in the world to think like I think. But if you take a lava lamp, you plug it in and you see what happens inside of that lava lamp, then you will realize this is exactly the same thing that's happening in all of our universe, that material and light and everything else are moving around in that particular pattern. Thanks for listening.